job is too big for you. That's why Jesus came. To give it to you as a gift. A simple promise. (sighs) A simple promise that you've been made righteous through faith in Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Self-focus, I am qualified by my good works. Jesus-focus, I am qualified because of Jesus. One makes you either condemned or (laughs) self-righteous. The other one makes you really happy. I am qualified by my good works. If If that's what your heart tells you, I'm qualified for God's blessing, his favor, provision, healing, guidance, wisdom, favor. I'm qualified because of what I do. Then it will produce either condemnation or self-righteousness. But if you turn your focus to Jesus and all you say, you settle and rest and I am qualified because of Jesus, your heart will be filled with peace and joy and love. See how simple it is to live in the abundant life that we've all kind of like, where is this abundant life? Where is this abundant life? Where is it? Because I sure ain't finding it very far. Right? Where is this abundant life? Jesus came that I might have abundant life? Well, I don't really feel like I'm having any abundant life. Has anybody felt like that besides me? Do you see how simple it is to enter into experiencing the abundant life? Take your eyes off yourself and put your eyes on Jesus. Start rejoicing in what he did for you. You're perfect and you're qualified because of Jesus. That makes you really happy. Okay, what does it mean to be righteous? We talked about that in week one. But I'm going over it again. Because someone can tell you you're righteous, and if you don't know what that means, it's Christianese. Isn't it? You've been made righteous in Jesus. Well, that's great. What's that mean? (laughs) Right? Okay. Okay. Righteous means innocent, free from guilt or blame, and justified. It is the judicial act of God by which he pardons all the sins of those who believe in Christ and accounts, accepts, and treats them as righteous in the eye of the law. In addition to the pardon of sin, justification declares that all the claims of the law are satisfied. The law is not relaxed or set aside, but is declared to be fulfilled in the strictest sense. And so the person justified is declared by God to be entitled to all the advantages and rewards arising from perfect obedience to the law. It proceeds on the crediting to the believer by God himself the perfect righteousness of Jesus Christ. Justification is not the forgiveness of sin without righteousness but a declaration that he possesses a righteousness which perfectly forever satisfies the law, namely Christ's righteousness. Okay. The point is, when you are declared righteous, you are declared by God himself to be forgiven for all of your sin. You are innocent and blameless before God. When he declares you righteous... And you are entitled, God declares you because of your faith in Jesus, not because of your good works, but because of your faith in Jesus, entitled to all the advantages and rewards as though you perfectly obeyed the law. You have been given the perfect righteousness of Jesus. Okay, so what are the advantages? Okay, I just told you that. You're entitled to all the advantages and benefits as though you perfectly obeyed the law. Okay, that's great. What does that mean? What are the advantages? What are the benefits of perfect obedience? Because that's what you've been given in Christ. Okay, let's answer that question. Ready? 
So what are the rewards of perfect obedience to the law? What are the advantage of being declared righteous in Jesus? Now, I can't read all these scriptures because I don't have time. But I am telling you right now, you go home (laughs) and you think upon and read and put these in your heart because these scriptures are the rewards and advantages you have been given as a pure gift. You don't have to work for these promises. You don't have to struggle and try to be good enough to be entitled to them. They are a pure gift. These promises I've listed here, and there are 12 of them. I could have done more, but that's, you know, I couldn't give you 20 pages of notes. But these promises are what I live in, I think on, I ponder. These promises are what I have, who I am in Jesus. I rest in these promises I have in Christ. And it gives me pure joy. And it gives me perfect peace. It's not enough for somebody just to tell me I'm righteous. It really isn't. I have to understand what does that mean? I've been given righteousness as a gift. What does that mean for my everyday life? What does that mean when my children are going haywire? What does it mean when I'm facing lack or dealing with a symptom in my body? What does it mean when somebody's saying evil things about me? What does it mean to be righteous before God? It means that you are entitled to all the rewards and benefits as though you perfectly obeyed the law. So when you read scriptures in the Bible that says the righteous this, the righteous have this, this is what they're, that's talking about you. This is your inheritance. This is your benefit package. Not because of what you've done, but because of what Jesus has done for you. So here we go. Awake to righteousness. You are qualified, innocent, forgiven, accepted, approved, and loved. Join Connie Witter as she takes you on a grace-filled journey through the book of Romans and discover what being righteous in Jesus truly means. Get your personal copy of Awake to Righteousness, also available as a group Bible study package. Call 918-994-6500 or visit ConnieWitter.com to order or download your copy today. Complete acceptance and approval before God. When you, that's the benefit or reward of being declared righteous. You are completely accepted and approved before God. Do you know people live their whole life seeking approval? Their whole life they're seeking approval approval. They need approval because honestly, God put that need within us to be approved of. And you have been given complete and utter approval by the King of Kings. Nobody else's approval matters. Nobody else's opinion matters. When you realize you've been made righteous in Jesus and it's a pure gift, you know You're approved by your heavenly father forever. There ain't nothing you can do for him to disapprove of you. If you are in Christ, if you are in Christ, you are approved forever. Number two, blessed in every area of your life. You know those Deuteronomy chapter 28 blessings that I tried so hard to qualify for about 20 years ago. I tried so hard because it says if you obey all the commands of God, if you obey all the law, all these blessings will come upon you. And so I tried really hard to obey all the law. But guess what? I found out that I have been entitled to all the advantages and benefits and rewards as though I perfectly obeyed the law because of Jesus. So now I can go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28 
and see what the benefit package is. I'm blessed when I come in. I'm blessed when I go out. Everything I put my hand to prospers. A surplus of prosperity comes upon the righteous. The fruit of my womb is blessed. Woo! I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not belief. I'm the lender and not the borrower. Because that's the benefits and rewards of being declared righteous before God. Woo! We're blessed. You know what the word blessed means in Hebrew? Anointed and empowered to prosper. That's what it means. When the Lord blesses you, and he does in Christ, he has anointed you and he has empowered you to prosper in every area of your life. Woo, prosperity, Proverbs 13, 21, prosperity is the reward of the righteous. Are you righteous? Yes. Then prosperity is your reward. Amen. Health and renewed youth. Don't we all want that? Yeah. That's the benefit of being declared righteous. Health and renewed youth. Favor and guidance, for surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with a favor, with fa your favor, as with a shield. Financial abundance, this is one of my favorites. Psalms 37, 17, and 19, the Lord sustains the righteous. They will not be ashamed in the, t in the time of evil, and in the days of famine they will have abundance. You know what? I just love how the Lord has given me such a revelation that when the economy is down, I'm going to prosper because I've been declared righteous in Jesus. When I hear, you know what? Most people, Christians included, will listen to the news. The economy's down. People are losing their jobs. When I watch that, I go, yippee! I'm going to prosper. No, I mean, I'm not happy that people are losing their jobs. So don't get that wrong. But do you understand what I'm saying? Instead of what we don't go, you know, honestly, we're not worried about other people. We're worried about ourselves. When we hear the bad economy news, we're like, oh, those poor. We're like, oh, my gosh, how is that going to affect me? I might lose my job. My business might go down. Oh, no. Come on. Yes. We're thinking about me. But when I hear... The economy is down. There's famine in the land. I remember Psalms 37. And it says, in the time of famine, the righteous will have abundance. And do you know that that is exactly what has happened in my life? The manifestation of that promise has happened in my life. I mean, starting back in 2000, you know, 9-11 when all that happened, I mean, we, me and my household have prospered and prospered and prospered and increased. Amen. Wow. That is the truth of what of what's happened in Connie's life. And the only thing that I can say is, focus on Jesus. You want to know the, the, the secret? It's just focus on Jesus. Instead of me going around going, oh my gosh, how is this going to affect me? Because if I do, guess what? It's going to affect me. If I go around in condemnation thinking, oh no, God's not going to take care of me. What if I lose my job? I'm going to lose everything. Guess what's going to happen? Exactly what you're thinking. Because you are, you are condemning yourself. You're condemning yourself. Okay? But when you hear the economy's going down, People are losing their jobs. My husband lost his job. Okay, so I'm not saying you might not lose your job. My husband lost his job, but guess what? Two months later, his income doubled. Two months later. Thank God he lost his job. Okay, so you may. I'm not saying you're not going to lose your job. I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying that you might not experience some negative situation that you're facing. Because I did. I looked square in the face at, this is going to affect you, Connie, and it's going to affect you bad. Okay? I looked square in the face at it, and I ran to Jesus. Amen. And I said, Jesus, what do you say? Tell me one more time, Lord, what you say, because all these people around me are afraid. I don't want to live in fear. 
I want to live in peace. I want to live by faith. I want to live by relying on you, Jesus, and not myself. And he said, Connie, I said my plan was to prosper you. My plan was to give you a hope and a future. All grace abounds towards you, Connie. That's, that's your benefit for being righteous. That's your reward for me declaring you righteous in Christ. And I said, thank you, Jesus. And my mind stayed on, thank you, Jesus. In the time of famine, the righteous prosper, Lord. And you said, I'm righteous because of Jesus. And it happened. When you live with a condemned heart, you do live in shame and guilt and pain. You do. Even though Jesus set you free, you live there. I know because I did. But when you turn and you realize you're righteous in Christ, you're blessed, you're favored, how exciting is that? Even when you're looking square in the face at a circumstance that tells you it's not true. You say, Jesus, you made me righteous. Even when you had, let's say you, had a, you have a business and you had a great month, and the next month it's down. You look at that circumstance square in the face, and you don't go, what am I doing wrong? I must be doing something wrong, because I had a great month last month, but this month I'm, I'm down. I must be doing something wrong, you know? Right? Isn't that how we are tending to do? No, you look at that down square in the face, and you go, Jesus, you made me righteous. I am blessed because of you. I am not defined by whether or not I had a great month or whether I had a bad month. I am defined by Jesus and his righteousness. And I am blessed going in and I'm blessed going out. And I will not believe the circumstances. Amen. Woo! <laughs> I'm telling you what, this is living by relying on Jesus. This is living. This is what it looks like. This is what I'm telling you. Romans chapter 4. Living by relying upon Jesus. The promise is guaranteed to those who rely upon Jesus. The rewards, the benefits, the fruit of righteousness is guaranteed in the life of the person who will rely upon Jesus. Turn to him when you're facing negative circumstances. Turn to him. Ask him for his grace to help you trust him. Listen to what he tells you who you are. Your circumstances do not define you. Your past mistakes do not define you. The enemy uses your past mistakes and your present circumstances to tell you you're doing something wrong. You aren't doing anything wrong. The only thing truly we can be doing wrong, if you want to talk about doing wrong, is focusing on ourself. That's it. So it's not about all of the stuff out here. It's about what's going on in here. Who are you looking to for your righteousness yourself? Are you looking to Jesus? Because when you look to Jesus, you're going to live in peace. You're going to live in joy. And you're going to experience the benefits and rewards of the righteous. For it's guaranteed to all who rely upon Jesus. <sighs> Deliverance and victory in every situation, number seven. Number eight, a joyful and peaceful heart and home. Amen. Number nine, children who live in the truth and have great peace. That's the benefit and reward of perfect obedience that you've been given in Christ. Righteousness. Number 10, false accusations against you will not prosper. I love that one. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. For he who rises against you in judgment shall be shown to be in the wrong. For this vindication is of the Lord for the righteous. Praise God. I've stood on that one a plenty of time. Number 11, powerful and effective prayers. For the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. One step to powerful prayers. Righteousness. You're righteous, your prayers are powerful. Believe it. Believe it. Rely upon Jesus. And protection. 
He has given his angels charge over us to protect us in all our ways. Amen? Amen. The rewards and benefits of being made righteous. If you embraced every one of those things that I just shared with you, you'd be one happy person. The promise and benefits of righteousness are guaranteed to those who share the faith of Abraham. The following verses give us a clear picture of what it looks like to live by faith, relying upon Jesus for salvation. As it is written, verse 17, I have made you the father of many nations. He was appointed our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and speaks of non-existent things as if they already existed. For Abraham, human reason for hope being gone, hoped in faith that he would become the father of many nations as he had been promised. So numberless shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered the utter impotence of his own body, which was as good as dead, because he was about a hundred years old. Or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's dead and womb. No unbelief or distrust made him waver, doubtingly questioned concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God, fully satisfied and assured that God was able and mighty to keep his word and to do what he had promised. Now listen to this in the message, I love it. Verse 19 through 21, Abraham didn't focus on his own impotence and say it's hopeless. This hundred-year-old body could never father child, nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. He didn't tiptoe around God's promise, asking cautiously skeptical questions. He plunged into the promise and he came up strong, ready for God, ready for God, sure that God would make good on what he had said. For many, many years of my Christian life, I tiptoed around God's promises, asking skeptical, what's that? cautiously skeptical questions. Well, if this is true, see, what did, what did the father say to Abraham? I've made you the father of many nations. I have made you righteous. But Abraham's circumstances looked hopeless. What the father said about Abraham did not look true. But Abraham chose to not be defined by his present circumstances. He chose to be defined by what his father said about him. It doesn't matter what it looks like. If the father says you're blessed, if the father says you're favored, if the father says your children are taught of the Lord and obedient to his will, if the father says his righteousness will be with your children's children and your children will rise up and call you blessed because you've been made righteous in Jesus, then guess what? That is exactly what is true about you, despite your circumstances. Healed. That's right. If your body is screaming at you that you're not healed, that doesn't define you. Your circumstances do not define you. What the Father says defines you. You are not defined by your past mistakes, and you are not defined by your present circumstances. You are defined by the righteousness that's been given to you in Christ Jesus. You are defined by what the Father says about you. When Abraham was empowered by faith by giving praise and glory to God, that word glory means the Father's good opinion. Abraham was glorifying God by agreeing with what the Father said said about him. He was giving praise and glory to God saying, Father, if you say I'm righteous, then I'm righteous. If you say I'm blessed, then I'm blessed. That's what it means to give glory to God. We think giving glory to God is all these things we have to do, but it's about what you believe. You give glory to God when you believe what the Father says about you, no matter what your financial situation no matter what your body's screaming at you, no matter what your children are acting like, no matter who's saying mean things about you, no matter if you lost your job or the economy's going down, you believe what the Father says because that's where, that's where your identity is. 
What does it mean to rely upon Jesus? What does it mean to live by faith? It means your past mistakes do not define you. Your present circumstances do not define you. Your identity is not in your failures. Your identity is is not in your present circumstances. You don't go, well, my body says I'm sick, so I'm sick. No. My father says I'm healed in Jesus. My Father says I'm blessed in Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for making me righteous. Thank you that my present circumstances does not change the truth that I am holy and righteous and qualified and approved because of Jesus. Self-focused is defining yourself by your past mistakes and your present circumstances. That's being self-focused. Jesus-focused is, it doesn't matter what mistakes I've made. It doesn't matter what my circumstances are screaming at me. I am identified. I am defined by what Jesus did for me in making me righteous. Awake to righteousness. You are qualified, innocent, forgiven, accepted, approved, and loved. Join Connie Witter as she takes you on a grace-filled journey through the book of Romans and discover what being righteous in Jesus truly means. Get your personal copy of Awake to Righteousness, also available as a group Bible study package. Call 918-994-6500 or visit ConnieWitter.com to order or download your copy today. In her new book, Living Loved, Living Free, Connie Witter takes you on a journey to begin living in the unconditional love of the Father through the finished work of Jesus. We live loved and live free when we take on the Father's opinion of us and we say, Father, I know you love me and what you say about me is true. For a gift of $20, receive the Living Loved, Living Free book and the bonus CD. Call the number on your screen or go online at ConnieWitter.com. If you have been blessed by today's message, we invite you to partner with us. Your monthly gift will make it possible for more people to hear the true gospel of grace. Call the number on your screen right now or visit ConnieWitter.com to sign up as a partner today. Together, we can make a difference and see precious lives transformed and live free in the Father's love. Thank you for watching Because of Jesus with Connie Witter. Visit us online at ConnieWitter.com for numerous grace-filled resources for men, women, teens, and children. We offer devotional books for girls, a preschool curriculum for kids, companion CDs and DVDs for our adult Bible studies, and so much more. Additionally, many of our products are available as a download on your digital devices for fast access. Connect with us online at ConnieWitter.com. And remember, it's all because of Jesus.